Hello, everyone. Today, I want to cover the second key factor of the templated component, which is the generic typed list of items. The purpose of these items is to provide a list of items for the uh, generic type render fragment to use. But is that the only purpose? Can it be used for any other purposes? Today, we're going to talk about using the generic typed items by itself. Uh, we're we're going to learn that by creating a automatic rendered grid. Let's call it auto grid. The way I do it is that I'm not going to have the render fragment. I'm only going to have this items and then I'm going to use reflection to cr create a automatically generated grid. Okay, let's jump into the, the all right, so let's create a control uh, component. Let's call it grid automatic automatic grid. All right, so don't need the title first. We need a parameter. Let's create this type prem. Right, this is the type of the. This is the generic generic type of this this list. Right, and this we would call it items. <clears throat> so instead of uh, using the render fragment with this items, we can use this item by itself. So how do we do that, right? So we need to use reflection in C sharp. We need to see all of the properties of this item itself before the component is rendered. And there is a event in the event lifecycle that is called on parameter set. And that function, that method is called when the parameters are set and before the uh, components rendered. So let's override that on parameter set uh, event. If the items is not now and items count is greater than zero, then this is the place where we use reflection. Right? Type of item this reflection to analyze what kind of parameters, what kind of properties the item has, right? And um, the type of, the type has a get members method, which is gonna give us some information about um, our, Right, so this member info we need to include we need to use the uh, system dot reflection name space Ref, reflection and okay so now we have this we got the member info and we can do this all right so this member info has uh, the <coughs> information about all of all of the members including like constructors methods properties and all those stuff right so and then we can use this to uh in our markup so in our markup we want to render we want to render a table right so it's great is like a table right so um this is like we only render the table if the member information has inform has value uh like this and we're gonna render a table and we're gonna call it um, uh, I'm gonna use the table class and let's first render the header right and uh, it's gonna have a list of columns and that list of columns corresponds to the pro to the properties we're gonna loop through the list of members, right? 
you know, this member has a member type property. And this in, indicates whether it's a constructor or it's a property or it's a method. Uh, so we will only um, create a column for the members that are properties. So if if member dot member type equals member types dot see we have property field method uh, and this is type and all these stuff constructor so event so uh, we will only render if it's property right and then in this case we render member dot uh, name and we're gonna use it in our index the home page here we need to fix some data to it right so I have prepared some data so we have this first we declare a class it can be any class and then um, I'm gonna override the initialize event cycle and the weather and in here we're going to initialize that actually we're going to have a uh, <coughs> list right and then in here we're going to create a list of employees Uh, let's just call it employees okay initialize this list of employees so we have this list of employees and uh, we want to provide this to the great component right? because we already have this items uh, in at a parameter inside the great component so now we are going to call the great auto component and we know that there's a parameter that is items and we are going to provide employees um, list to it. And let's see when we run it, what it looks like. Okay, so we see this ID name title department, right? And uh, now we can we'll go back to our grid component and complete the rest of the markup. So in the, in the body, we're gonna get the value of, of each, each property. Right, so in here we are gonna say you know uh, for each item in the stock items. Right, so this is gonna have as many rows as the number of items. Um, so we're gonna create a row under here, and then we're gonna loop through the basically the same thing. We're gonna loop through the the properties. And then we got the value of each property, right? So in here, instead of th, it's gonna be td, and uh, we are gonna call item dot get type get property, and then which property is this property? Providing the name of that property, and then there is a uh, there is a method get value. And um, so it's for this item. Uh, oh, so uh, I believe this is it. And let's go back and refresh. All right, so we have our automatic uh, uh, grid. So this is great, but I don't want to show the ID, right? I don't want to show certain columns. So what do I do? Okay, so we can create some, we can create another property here. Uh, parameter here and uh, let's call it let's call it uh, you know uh, columns to exclude and it's going to be a CSV and how do we use this so if this contains so I guess it's going to be in here and then we're going to say that if it's a property and if the name uh, 
sorry, no, it's not, but it's the other way around. It's if the columns contains, if it doesn't contain, and it's gonna be case insensitive and negation. So if it doesn't contain the columns to exclude, then we're gonna render it, right? So the same logic would be also applied to here, right? And going back to our place, to, and then we can provide that extra parameter, that columns to exclude and we can call it ID, right? Uh, and in this case, I think it's going to work. Let's refresh. All right, so we don't have the ID column. And if we don't want the name column, uh, well, that's probably not a good idea. Let's see. If we don't want the department column, we can add the department column. And then we refresh. You notice the department column is going to be gone. All right, cool. Okay, and I like the department column, so let's put it back. Another thing is that uh, we are using BOMA. Right, and for BOMA table, it has different kinds of uh, uh, classes to modify the uh, the appearance. So let's do a search right, BOMA table, and go to BOMA, and you can see that it has different modifiers. Right, so is bordered, is striped. So how do we give the developer the ability to add these modifiers? So that's an easy job. We go to here and um, actually we're going to have another parameter and let's call it, it's going to be string type and let's call it CSS plus, right? And we are going to come over here and I'm going to modify this to dynamically create the classes here. So, um, so CSS class, actually, let's use this. Uh, it's going to be a table, right? So that's the basic thing. And then we are going to have uh, this dot. Oh, okay, okay. It's going to be like this and CSS plus. If we don't provide anything, uh, I hope it still work. All right, so we're not providing anything, it still works. So let's uh, make it uh, strapped. Let's go over here and then we add another, uh, let's call it CS class and we add the is strapped over here and see whether that works. Refresh the screen again. All right, so it adds the, uh, the modifiers to it, right? What else we can add? We can add is bordered, right? Is narrow, uh, is hoverable. Let's, this is interesting. Let's add this and we're gonna add this over here and go back and refresh. Cool, see, I'm hovering my mouse over the rows and it's highlighting it. We have learned one of the purpose of having the generic typed uh, list of items, right? We can use reflection to create a, a grade automatically. And uh, if, yeah, I think you can, I would, I would see myself use this kind of grade uh, pretty often uh, in those cases that I don't care about providing some specific control over the look and feel of each column and if you care about that then in my next video we're going to create a another grade that is not automatic and allows the developer to provide a template for each column if you just need to simply display the list of information in a grade like this so you can basically have this automatic generated grade component and use it in a lot of different places um, you can even provide 
another parameter for the developer to use to provide the list of names of the columns because sometimes you don't want to use the uh, variable name. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's it for today that we learned how to, one of the ways to use the generic typed list items by creating a automatic generated grid. Uh, if you like my video, please give it a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.